Hey, Ty, what's the biggest thing that this offense needs to do from week one to week two? Um, I think uh, just come out and execute the game plan, uh, play with more effort. Uh, that's something we've been emphasizing a lot was uh, playing with more effort. Uh, we'll go out there. Um, I think we, we have to clean up some things that we uh, obviously didn't do as well last week or two weeks ago um, and come out um, this upcoming weekend and uh, uh, play with effort and execution. And also interesting playing a team in Wagner that's just like you guys, disappointed with the way they played in week one going through, I would imagine, the same things you guys are going through in practice to prepare for them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, when you when you lose a game, you come back and go back to the drawing board and kind of rethink how you go about uh, what your game plan was and, and how you uh, played. But I think, uh, you know, it was kind of all on us, the way that we we played. It was a lot on uh, our parts of how we played and the, the execution piece of it. So that's just something that we've been uh, emphasizing a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Matt Hurst. Ty, physically, just because of the speed of your rehab and how fast you got back, uh, how'd you feel after the game and, and how has your body responded uh, coming out of that with treatment and everything so far? Yeah, uh, definitely a little sore. You know, it's been a while since I've, I've played a little bit, you know, uh, but just staying in the training room, um, just making sure I'm staying on top of the stuff. Body feels pretty good. Uh, I felt a lot better than than I thought it was going to be after the game. So that was something that was uh, really encouraging for me, uh, knowing that, you know, uh, that's something that you, you worry about, whether your body's still able to, uh, you know, be able to work as well as you would hope it would. And so after the game, not being as sore as I thought I was, uh, was something that definitely was very encouraging for me. Just sharing your opinions with the coaching staff, thoughts on some of the new concepts, the split backs and the, the full house backfield all uh, at times showed that they might have a modicum of success for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was definitely something, uh, you know, you go into the game and you're, you're, uh, you practice it, you do a lot of it, and you, you feel confident with it. Um, and you kind of want to see how, how it pans out against a, a team, a really good team in Notre Dame. Um, and seeing how, how well it would have it was working uh, was something that was definitely encouraging, I think, for all of us as a, as an offensive unit, uh, knowing that as, as if we just, uh, you know, do what we need to do, uh, that the, the system works and that, that it, it will be uh, very helpful for us to be able to do a lot of these different things in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Dan. Great. Uh, hey, Ty. Um, good to see you. Just, you know, your coaches have talked very highly over you over the summer and the preseason, but what did you feel just coming back after the injury? Um, your body, I know you, you said um, not as sore, but just in terms of mentally what you were seeing out there, where where can you get better and um, kind of what was your assessment? Yeah, um, I definitely feel like the game was definitely uh, a lot slower for me still, just the, being able to uh, you know, continue playing after have been playing the last two seasons. Uh, for me, improvement was I think, uh, you know, I missed a couple checks, missed a couple reads uh, here and there uh, that I definitely need to clean up a bit. Um, and then definitely my effort piece uh, have to be able to uh, play with a better effort out there. Uh, that's something that we obviously have been emphasizing, like I said. Um, so that's something that you know throughout last week of practice and this week of practice is something that uh, that I'm working on, trying to improve on, and trying to you know, encourage the other guys and stuff as well to 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 bring an effort out there or and uh you know energy out there regardless of how we feel each day. Yeah, I get that. That in that effort. So like is there certain things that um I know a lot of it's kind of just the, the heart and hustle and the and the mental aspect of it, but um as well as the physical side, what what is it exactly? Are there any tangible things that we can look for that in terms of wh where you guys want to be? Um, just kind of like finishing the plays, like kind of uh, after the ball's pitch, kind of tasting after the ball, uh, kind of like our, you know, how defenses do the the kind of uh, everyone should be around the ball almost at all times. So uh, something that that's what we're trying to get to uh, on the offensive side as well is uh, when the ball carrier has the ball, the other people, the, the other ten people are chasing after him as well to to uh, ensure that we can either uh, be there if something goes wrong or or be able to pick up a block or something uh, if he if he ends up breaking one. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, uh, Coach Jasper had indicated you gained a little weight, got a little heavy after, you know, undergoing the surgery, which is expected considering you weren't able to exercise as much. How difficult was it to shed the pounds? Because he was kind of proud of you. I think he might have been worried whether you'd be able to get back down to the weight you needed to be. How difficult was that? Yeah, um, it was definitely a challenge, a mental challenge, as well as a physical one. Uh, you know, I had surgery and then kind of just was hanging out 
not really doing much after it. Um, so when it came back time for summer workouts to happen, uh, I didn't really realize how heavy I was until I got on the scale. And then I was like, wow. Uh, so it was something that, you know, me and him talked about. And it, it kind of was, he told me it was going to be uh, something that showed how much I cared about, you know, wanting to be uh, at the weight that I wanted to be at. Um, and so that's something that I kind of took to heart and uh, kind of just each day, took it day by day um, and lost a lot of weight for uh, before we went into fall camp. And that was something that uh, I felt really proud of too, because that's something that uh, took a lot of discipline on my part to be able to, to consistently stay with the, the diet plan that I had and uh, going to work every day, knowing that I, I wasn't where I wanted to be, but I had a chance to give back to where I needed to be at. So, so I know you got mental reps in the spring as far as learning the new offense, but that's not the same as being out on the practice field, getting practice reps and actually executing the plays. How much do you think you fell behind by not being able to participate in the spring? And did was it a bit of a cram course in you know preseason camp to catch up? Yeah, um, I mean, I think for the most part, you know, it's uh, you always want the the physical reps. That's something that uh, you know, as a quarterback, is something that's huge, especially live reps against our defense. Is something that uh, helps out tremendously uh, going against other teams because our defense does so many things. Um, but I think for the most part, it was, I mean, it was a new, newer offense. So, uh, that was something that you can kind of learn on, on paper a lot, much, a lot like you can learn out on the field. Um, I think for me, it was the, the verbal and the, uh, the verbal part of it. That was the part that was the most, um, taxing understanding like the lingo and the new kind of ways we were, we were calling plays and how exactly we want to, um, you know, run these certain plays that we have. Uh, and that, that's something that I think um, kind of fell behind with without going in spring. But for the most part, I think um, during fall ball was something that each day kind of had to go out and attack uh, kind of with more enthusiasm than I would have had to since I did, wasn't able to participate in spring. But uh, overall, I think, you know, Coach Jasper, Coach Chestnut, they, they uh, helped out a lot with helping me understand how and what the offense needed to be and look like. All right, we'll make another trip around. Uh, we'll go to, again, Scott Wyckoff. Ty, how important is it for you guys to put Notre Dame in the rearview mirror and really focus and, and make sure the sights are set on this Wagner team? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, after every game, uh, the next game is the one that's most important because that, that one's in the past. Uh, you did, you, you you prepared for it. You, uh, you wish you could get some things back. Um, but I think for the most part, understanding that uh, – you know, that's a good team. It's a very good Notre Dame team. Um, and I think we took a lot of things from that game, regardless of how it went uh, on both sides of the ball. We understand where we were at, and it was a good uh, judging point from what we need to get better at. And so I think kind of moving forward, understanding where we where we fell short in some areas is something that uh, will help us a lot moving forward in the season and understanding that uh, the next game is the most important one. And in this one, the tables are turned. You guys are the underdogs against Notre Dame, and now you guys are the ones that are the big favorites against Wagner. Yeah, uh, and I think that's something that I don't think a lot of us really look at that, uh, knowing that a lot of the times we do go into games as underdogs. So I think for all of us, it's kind of just like go out the game uh, with the same mentality, regardless of, of what team it is or who we're playing, uh, because we know a lot of times we're the ones that are that are on the the, end, the other end of the stick. So uh, I think that's just the way that our, our team and uh, our mentality is as a, as a unit. So good luck. Thank you. Pete. Ty. The cliche is when you have a big play there and you miss on it, it's very deflating. You guys were moving the ball in that first drive and you miss on a pass play that was indeed there. I mean, both guys uh, even were open on the play. Was that play as deflating as the cliche is because it could have been such a big play and, and really helped you all finish off that drive and answer Notre Dame right back? Um, you know, there's there's two sides of it. I think uh, obviously the side that you said, it, you know, it, it stinks that you weren't able to uh, finish a drive like that when we were we were moving the ball pretty effectively. Um, that's something that you wish you you could you know get back because you know we weren't lined up the way we wanted to be lined up. Uh, so it was kind of something that was kind of sped up, hurried up, and uh, we obviously made a mistake off of that. But um, also, I think at the same time, it, it it was our first drive as a unit as an offense that we were running this kind of offense in. Um, and we did move the ball pretty effectively, which is something that I think was very encouraging for us, knowing that, uh, you know, we can do it if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. 
so I think there was two sides of it. Um, obviously, you wish you could get that play back and, you know, complete the pass and stuff like that. But uh, I think we, you know, it's just a, it depends on how you look at it and the way that we all viewed it. But I think we knew that it was pretty encouraging as well, knowing that we um, were moving the ball as effectively as we were. So Your timetable was in, was very fast for a guy coming back from the injury that you had uh, based on the timing of when it was. For you, what was the driving force? and What were the most important things during that rehab that allowed you to not only get back on the field, but to be ready to start uh, game one? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they say, you know, you don't know, you, you take for granted things until you, you don't have it anymore. And uh, I think I wasn't, you know, you kind of go out there and you, you know, your body's hurt and stuff like that. And I think last season, you know, I was, you know, we were playing and then I got, I told my ACL and I had to watch the last four games. And I think, um, you know, never really undergoing a surgery like that. And then having to sit there and like, realize that you know you like you take things for granted like I couldn't even like when when you had to sit there for like on crutches for six to eight weeks or something like that and like not being able to walk was something that was like something that I was like I was I would look at it and I was like I'm never gonna take for granted like things like this again because you know you don't know when you had like what you had uh, so I think for me it was just understanding that like those last four games not being able to be out there with my brothers and play with them uh was something that was very uh Hurt, like it hurt me a lot knowing that I couldn't help out at all. So I think that was something that I just didn't want to happen and wanted to – I only have really one more season left of, of football in my life probably. So uh, trying to get back as fast as possible for that was probably the biggest factor for me, I think. Thanks. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Ian. Uh, you've been in this offense for a while, and a lot has been talked about the the new mentality and the changes. What have you enjoyed the most, and um, how have you had to change? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing has just been the uh, the the amount of like dynamic ability there is. How much how there's opportunities for everyone on the field to get the ball at any time, given time, uh, which is something that's pretty new and pretty pretty exciting for me. Uh, knowing that there's a lot of explosive plays that can that can happen at really any minute um, if we if we do the right thing. Uh, and I think for me the the biggest difference has been uh, the way that we're operating, kind of the triple and understanding that uh, there's certain plays that are kind of like the old way we used to run it where I kind of have to get downhill and then now there's certain plays where I have to stay just – I have to just run flat and just try to out-leverage everyone. And that's kind of something that's uh, been the biggest thing for me is learn, understanding the differences in them and understanding uh, what Coach Chestnut is trying to get at when he calls certain plays. So, And I guess, you know, getting – as piggybacking on the injury coming back to full strength, I mean, a lot of the coaches said they think you're actually better than you were last year. So what um, – before you were injured, kind of what what goes to that? Do you attribute it to anything in particular? Uh, yeah, I think I mean I think the strength staff and uh, the the training staff uh, have done a huge huge uh, or great job uh, with helping me get back to my recover or back to full uh, mentally and physically. I think mentally part is a is a big part of it too because um, they would just tell me that you know even though it, it feels like it hurts right now like. It does. It, it's it's part of the process. There's going to be good days, going to be bad days, but um, understanding that you know you're it's you have to just trust it at this point, and knowing that like going out to fall camp, I just had to trust that the strength was where it was need to be because of the strength staff and and the training staff. Um, so I kind of just like relied on that and just believed that you know um, the doctors did a great job, the strength, everyone else did a great job. So I just kind of had to put that in the back of my mind and forget about the the fact that I did have surgery. And I think that was a huge part that helped me be able to come out and just like kind of attack each day uh, and try to get back to full health. So. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Wags. <clears throat> uh, Coach had indicated that you kind of separated yourself the last couple of weeks of preseason. What did you feel like you just got to a place where you're really getting comfortable with the offense and you're able to start clicking? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think, I think, you know, you, uh, it was difficult at first understanding the, like, obviously the offense and how, uh, the terminology and stuff like that. But I think once I kind of, you know, um, understood it, like understood the base of what we were doing and, and the terminology and all that, then it kind of just started slowly, uh, piecing itself together and the game started slowing down a little bit more. Um, and obviously there's things that I still have a lot to work on. So that's something that, uh, this week of practice and last week of practice was definitely, uh, just for me on, on trying to improve. So. Well, that's what I was just going to say. I feel like you still got quite a ways to go before you're really able to operate the offense the way Coach has done it once. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's always, always an improvement point and improvement parts. Um, and I think that something that I learned last week was, um, or 
from the Notre Dame game was that there were certain players that I thought I was doing the right thing, but uh, it was just little things that would have made a, a bigger a, one play into a bigger play uh, and things that, that you want to go back and correct and, and come out to practice and try to work on that to, to be able to, to you know, execute the offense as, as flawless as you can. So, Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Got about six and a half minutes left. Anyone have any other questions? Open forum. Are you back to golfing? No, not my, my, usually during football season, my, my, my golf game kind of goes away until afterward, just because, you know, the body's not as, not as mobile, I feel like, as it, as it is for uh, when you're not in season. So we'll, we'll have to wait until after the season for that. I saw him at the golf course in June. Yeah. So June is, June, the summertime is, is a good time for golf, too. Anyone have anything else for Ty? How much weight did you actually lose? Um, uh, down? Yeah, um, it was 25 pounds. In a, what amount of time? Is that the, uh, like a month and a half or yeah. so? What? Yeah, a month, month and a half. I'm guessing it wasn't Ozempic, the trend of the Hollywood. What, what did you do? Uh, no, it was it was just a lot of a lot of low calorie days. A lot of days where, you know, you kind of I kind of just like trained my stomach to like not really need as much food as it. At it, like I kind of, because obviously when you go home and you're just at home hanging out, eating fast food, you know, your kind of weight can just get away from you. So uh, when I came back, I was really just eating like tuna and like that's like tuna PB and J sandwiches was like all I ate for like a month and a half while we did summer workouts and stuff. So, well, coach, you kind of look at this as a get right game. If the defense can come out and pitch a shutout and if the offense could roll up some yards and points, uh, confidence would be improved. And you know, it changed the pole picture a little bit. Yeah, we're just excited to play play another game. You know, anytime you lose, you lose kind of like we did in the opener. Just it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And so, um, had a really good week uh, during the bye. We practiced four days. Thought we made a lot of progress. We full pads two of those days. Got after it pretty good. And so, I uh, thought our kids attacked the week. And, um, you know, they're they've got the bad taste in their mouth too, and they certainly approached the bye. Uh, like they had that taste in their mouth. And so just excited to go play another game. When you're going against an FCS opponent, I mean, is it more a case of focusing on Navy as opposed to the opponent? Obviously, you scout them and all that. But do you feel like this week is more or the last two weeks leading up to the game are more about focusing on Navy and getting better on both sides of the ball? I think every week the focus is on Navy. You know, I think you, you have to know your opponent, obviously. And, uh, but they're really uh, nameless and faceless. You know, if we go out and take care of our business, things usually go go pretty well, regardless of who it is that we're playing. So, the fact that it's an SCS opponent doesn't doesn't change anything for us. Doesn't change our approach. Uh, doesn't change our sense of urgency or anything like that. I mean, this maybe sounds silly to say after you lost forty-two to three in the opener, but do you? have to make sure your guys don't overlook an FCS opponent that just lost its opener fairly soundly? Do you have to – I mean, no, I'd, you're not anybody to look overlook anybody at this point, are you? No, not not, not at all, not even close. I mean, this is a you – know, I don't I look at every game on our schedule and, and think they're all winnable games and they're all games that we can get beat. And, uh, you know, you, I think the lesson we learned last year playing Delaware in the opener and uh, an FCS team – you know, it's a good reminder for our, for a football team, and um, but they're a, I think they're an improved football team. You know, you, I watched the game this morning, and um, they had uh, they got in the red zone a bunch. They had a lot of drop balls. Uh, they were able to move the football. I think they had close to 450 yards of offense in, in the opener. Uh, just some breaks didn't go their way. I think it's a much improved football team. You know, new offensive coordinator. Uh, we've got some good players, and this is certainly a team that um, could beat us. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, so we're going to go out like we would any other week and, and the fact that it's an FCS opponent doesn't doesn't change any of that for us. Hi, right, James. <clears throat> so kind of along those lines of preparation, um, I'm wondering what it's like to, to game plan just in general when you have a brand new offense. Um, so there isn't much of a track record or, or anything. Um, you have uh, an opponent this week that 
doesn't have the same kind of option film that some some former uh, opponents have. What's what's game planning like? Is it is it just again more focusing on yourself and and the the basics, or or can you take yeah, a different? I th- yeah, I think from an offensive perspective, you <clears throat> you never know what you're going to see week to week. Um, you know, even if you played a team or you played the previous year, then they come out and do something different. And so, you know, I think we got a, a decent idea of what we might see, and so you, you obviously you game plan for that, but. I think people's approach is similar to has been in the past as far as how they're going to defend us. They're going to have an option plan. You know, that's that's our base. They have to have a plan. It all starts there. But you, you really never know, you know, what you're going to see on, on that side of the football. Uh, offensively, they're doing some new things, uh, present some challenges, and, and, uh, and we started working on them last week. And so continue to do that this week and, and feel good about where we're at right now and, and the game planning uh, process and the progress that we've made. So last week when, when evaluated the defense, the defense, you, you talked about how, you know, there was problems with run fits, problems with tackling. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like it'd be a little bit of a surprise for such a veteran group coming back. Has that yeah. been, been a, 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 like a personal challenge for, for the players this week to, to get back on track? Yeah, certainly. I think you came out and watched our practice last week. We spent a lot of time on, on tackling, tackling circuits and, and, um, thought the defense came out and the way that they approached practice was as, as good as I've seen in a long time around here. You know, they were upset about the way that they played. And, uh, you know, I think Notre Dame had a lot to do with some of those missed tackles, uh, but we're a better tackling football team than, than what we showed. So it was back to the basics and the fundamentals. You know, something we emphasize a lot around here, something we take a lot of pride in the way we tackle. And you know, so it was a little bit of surprise and disappointing, you know, in that first game, but we certainly – like I said, went, went back to the basics, uh, drilled it a bunch this week, and, and our guys are going to take great pride in that. And, um, you know, the first game of the year, uh, we saw some wrinkles, some new things. And, and so to misfit some things uh, is, is kind of expected. Um, we probably did, did a little bit more than, than we hoped we would, obviously. But the tackling piece is something that's just, just got to get fixed. And you can't play good defense. You can't tackle well. And, uh, and I, I feel good about our approach last week. And, you no, know, Coach Walker's going to get that right on that side of the ball. All right, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Ben. Hey, Coach. Um, <laughs> I read a lot of your comments about the elite eat and the effort. And when we talked to Ty earlier today, he mentioned that the effort wasn't up to par, but things got better this week. What was your assessment of the effort and kind of what are the changes that you're looking for? Yeah, I think simply just, uh, you know, specifically on, on the offensive side of the football, it wasn't to the standard that, that we expect. Uh, we we demand, and so that was the big point of emphasis last week. If we if we play with that uh, that effort that we're talking about, Sheehan, and we execute, we're a pretty good football team. Uh, but if we we don't, obviously we we can lose every week that we play, and, and our kids need to understand that. I think they do, and so I think that message was driven home uh, pretty pretty good last week. I don't think that's going to be an issue uh, moving forward. And I also read your quotes that um, every job is open right now um, after that Notre Dame game. Anything um, changes over the last week? Anyone stand out or kind of put themselves in a different situation? Yeah, no, I think our guys come out and they're competing. And uh, we've, we've moved some guys around and I try to change some things up to, to make sure we're getting our best 11 on the field on both sides of the football. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased and excited with, with Braxton Woods, uh, freshman quarterback's progress. Um, you know, really throughout camp, but particularly the last couple of weeks, excited about him, some things he's done in practice. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys that stood out. Um, so, you know, we're kind of moving things around the offensive line a little bit. And um, it's always good to create that, that competition. And even if, if we'd won that game, I, I still want our players to feel that way. Um, like I said last week, you know, the, as uh, J.J. Watt says, the rent, rent's due every day around here. You know, make sure the guys are upholding that standard. And if they're not, then – Obviously, their job's at risk, and, and uh, so there's a certain way we have to play around here to be successful. Uh, our guys know that, and they understand that, and sometimes we just have to, to reinforce that and emphasize it. Uh, we'd hope that you wouldn't have to at this point, um, but every once in a while, you do. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Hey, Coach, what's the biggest thing that you're looking for in this game week two from your team against Wagner? Yeah. Effort and execution. Uh, period. We got to get better in both. Uh, I'm certain that we will, but when we play with the elite beat that we were talking about and, and we combine that with clean execution on both sides of the football, I think we got a chance to be a really good football team. 
uh, when you're lacking one or the other or, or both, um, we lose our edge and we're not a very good football team. And uh, our players understand that. You've been on the other sidelines for games like this, coaching for an FCS team. What was going through your minds in those games when you would come in to, to play a team like this on the road uh, in kind of a hostile environment, especially early yeah. in the season? It was exciting. You know, it was a, a chance to go out and prove yourself. And um, you kind of feel like you got nothing to lose. And, uh, you know, some of them sure those guys when they play FBS teams have a little bit of chip on their shoulder that maybe they weren't recruited by FBS teams and things like that. So it's it's a great opportunity for them to prove themselves and play at a little higher level maybe. Uh, and like I said, you kind of feel like you're an underdog and you, you got nothing to lose. And it's exciting, uh, you know, for, for, for players and for the staff to have an opportunity like that. What does it mean to you to be able to coach in this home opener at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium with all the, the battles <clears throat> and all the history that's been there? What is it like coaching there and having this home opener coming around for you? Well, I, I think it's the same as it always has been for me. It doesn't really change because I'm, I'm the head coach. I don't really think about it in, in those kind of terms. Uh, I'm just really excited to play at home in, in front of our home crowd and, and uh, have an opportunity to go out and, and, and make people proud and the way we play. And um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it in a while. Thanks a lot, coach. Thanks, Scott. Joe yeah, Miller. Hey, coach. Uh, first and foremost, how is the health of your team coming out of week one? Uh, pretty good. Um, we, we had a couple of, of um, injuries over, you know, between game one and, and now. Um, we're kind of working through right now and trying to, to find out for sure, you know, at, uh, where players at MRI this morning waiting on the results of that. So uh, we're going to speak about those guys specifically yet, but in general, it's, it's really good. One of the things coaches always talk about or is become a cliche, I guess, to some extent is um, how much a team can improve from week one to week two. And what area mm -hmm. are you looking at of your team that says, that you're looking forward to seeing the biggest improvement from week one to week two. Yeah, I think in parts, the effort piece that I talked about, and we played hard in first game, um, harder than most, uh, but we want to be elite in that category. We, we want to suffocate people with our effort, you know, and then just cleaner execution. And then you, know, the, you hope you make progress in the fundamentals and the technique of things and, um, you know, I think that's what the bye week is, is great for. But, yeah, you generally do see a ton of improvement from week one to week two, um, whether you have a bye or not. Hopefully that bye even makes that a, a bigger leap and jump for us is, is my my hope and expectation. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Pete, that hurts. Brian, I know it's kind of cliche, but when you go back and you look, um, and we just tie the same question, the first drive, uh, you guys are really motoring the ball down the field. So your newer concepts are actually finding success right off the bat. But when you miss a pass play and you know how, you know, significant they are because you only run them a couple of times maybe during a game. But when you miss a pass play and you miss a chance to match Notre Dame's score uh, in that game, do, do you feel a little bit of the air come out of the balloon knowing that you, you had a big play early there that you could have matched and, then, on, unfortunately, obviously, you know, they executed very well. And you, you look up, instead of being 7-7, you're down 14 nothing. It feels like the game just started. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it takes the air out of the balloon. We, we, going into a game like that, you know that when you do take those shots that you're going to have to hit them, you know. And uh, we had a couple opportunities and didn't capitalize on them. Um, and, you know, the, the margin for error is small. And so when you take those chances, especially the way – they were defending us with people up around the box like like they did. Uh, you really you, you have to hit on those plays. And um, unfortunately, we, we didn't, you know, and you go back to the first drive on defense, you, had, you know, third and long twice. And uh, and, and and really, you know, we're supposed to peel with the back, coming out of the backfield on the one third and ten, didn't do it. They were able to convert there. And so you feel like, you you know, those two plays, the, the shot play and then get on field on third down, you know, it, it, it might change the whole momentum of the game. Um, you know, and, and we got our butts beat. There's, there's no doubt about that. But you certainly you need some things like that to happen early in a game like that to, to where you have some momentum. But uh, but you certainly hope you can recover from those things too and move on to the next play. And we talk about that around here all the time. So you, you can't 
you can't let that lack of momentum affect your next drive and, and so on. But yeah, we certainly got to hit those plays when, when we have them. It, it, it seems simple, but it, because you don't get preseason games and it's not 15 years ago where you could hit a lot more, but is tackling one of the things that should take a significant step between game one and game two? I would think so. Uh, I hope so. Like I said, I didn't expect us to, to, to be support that in the opener. Um, but, you know, going back to work and, and reemphasizing it, and I think I think it'll get better. Um, certainly do. But, yeah, you don't. We take advantage of all the live opportunities that, that we have here. But like you said, you, you know, you can't go full pads consecutive days. You can't go live consecutive days. And so I think teams in general aren't as clean uh, of tackling teams uh, maybe as they used to be because of that, Pete. So it, it may take a few games where you're really going good on good and the speed of it to, to get get it really good at tackling. Tell me those are the things that show up early in the year and, and, and most teams get better at them. I shouldn't expect us to be at such a deficit at that point, you know, in the opener. And I still think we're a good tackling football team. I just think there's some little things, some little details that we got to work on to make us better. You mentioned Braxton earlier. Players in general that don't necessarily take the initial depth chart when the season starts and uh, kind of resign themselves to their fate that that's what they are. <laughs> but to see players like Braxton, and I'm sure there are others um, mm. that are still working hard to make progress, to still open. Uh, your eyes, what does it say about their character, especially for a, a young player like that, uh, to yeah. keep working hard, especially with all that those players have to deal with uh, in their first couple of months here? Yeah. It says a lot. And our, our plea class is great. You know, they, they know we don't redshirt here. Um, so I think some places, when that happens early on, they kind of resign to the fact it's going to be a redshirt year for them. They go into developmental mode. Uh, our guys here keep fighting. And, and you know, it's, it's harder to play here as a freshman than, than it is most places just because of the lack of time. We don't get those guys at the beginning of, of June. You know, they're not in summer school. They don't enroll early. Uh, they have the plebe summer. They come, they're coming out of that. They're not in football shape. Um, so it's it's really hard. Um, they're playing catch-up from, from the get-go. And we did some things this year to, to help that, you know, with some freshman-only practices. Um, you know, the first five practices that we had, we had separate freshman practices to help get those guys up to speed. Uh, to give them a better chance to contribute early. And, and every year we have guys that that, uh, that end up playing for us third, fourth, fifth game of the year, whether that's on special teams or working their way into the depth, you know, on both sides of the football. We've even pulled guys off the scout team. We look at a guy like Biscuit back in 19. He's on the scout team first, you know, four or five games of the year. And, uh, and so they go down there and they show up on, on those units. They show up in the special teams drills. And um, we need more of those guys to help us on, on spec teams. And there's a lot of really good ones right now. They're, they're working their way into that mix. Um, you look at Tyler Bradley, he's doing some really good things. Returning kicks for us. He's worked his way into depth on defense at slot. You know, Braxton is another one. That, but there's several young guys that, that we know are going to be really good players for us. And you want to be able to get those guys cranked up as early as you can. And typically, that's on special teams. That's kind of where they earn trust. And you start working them into the depth. And uh, But – Pleased with the progress of our, of our plebes, and there's certainly some several guys that are going to help us uh, win football games this year. Appreciate it. Thank you. James Hartner. Uh, hey, Coach, I just have one question for you. So um, throughout the Notre Dame game, and uh, even when the score was going up and up, um, you your team only committed three penalties. And I just want to ask, like, how did you uh, maintain the team to be like, hey, let's not, you know, let's not, I guess, force the ball over and whatnot? Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's it's always just it's one play at a time, right? Or talk about being one and oh, um, talk about maintaining our poise. And uh, so I, I think that's a big part of it. You know, our, and one thing you'll never see our kids do is lay down and, and quit. And they certainly didn't do that in the Notre Dame game. Uh, they kept fighting. You know, you see guys at the end on defense topping off. The game's clearly, you know, out of hand. and um, So I, I never question that with, with, with our players. I think, you know, and part of it's built in here a little bit, but this is one of the most resilient. Every team I've been a part of here is extremely resilient, and they, they bounce back. And you know, we've got some pretty mentally tough kids, and I think that's a big part of it, James. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Well, we'll start back around. Wags. So, Coach, going back to what Pete said, I, I checked the participation chart. It does – no plebes played in the opener, correct? No, Tyler no. Bradley played. 
Oh, Tyler Bradley got hit on special teams? Return to kickoff. Okay, got it. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, but you definitely expect to get some other plebes into game action here coming through, going forward? I do, yes. Um, Teddy Gleaton, I noticed he was with the scout team. Being as he came out of the spring as the starter, I was a little bit surprised. I thought you might get him back into the mix at quarterback. Um, you know, Tell me your thoughts on the reasoning behind that. Yeah. Well, we'd love to. We're kind of in a holding pattern with him and uh, his status here as a mid. And um, so we're working through that. And, and, you know, he's doing a great job. What we're asking him to do right now is staying focused and engaged. And, um, you know, time will tell with, with Teddy and what we can do with him. Well, on, based off that, would it be fair to say he kind of missed his opportunity? He's the guy that was battling. He was going to battle for the starting job going into yeah. fall camp, and he kind of – do you feel like he missed an opportunity there? Certainly. Yeah, that's, that's fair to say. Absolutely. And then uh, last for me, uh, Chip Kelly and some other coaches uh, kind of weren't too pleased with the new timing rules. I guess the teams that want to play fast and get a lot of possessions weren't happy. Um, do you feel like it's a little different story for Navy? You've always wanted to work the clock and mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Is this more – is Navy one of the few programs that's happy about time new timing rules? Yeah, I don't think it, it doesn't hurt us. You know, that's for sure. I think the, the estimation is that you're going to play five or six less snaps a game. You know, I don't know what the, the numbers look like, you know, after the first couple of weeks. Uh, but it does certainly seem like the games are a little bit shorter. You know, there's no doubt about that. I think I think the biggest change, and besides the running clock, is the, the, the referees aren't letting the offenses dictate the pace. You know, they're, they're spotting the ball at a consistent um, time. Um, and so I think that was the, the big change that needed to really happen. You know, you saw certain referees uh, spotting the ball at a different pace for some teams than they did others because of the tempo. So, so I think they keep that pace like they normally would, and, and maybe that's slowing those tempo teams down a little bit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, exactly how many, how many less plays on average that, that, that are happening in the game. I actually have that. I saw on Twitter just a few minutes ago. Week one this year, 67.4 <clears throat> plays per game. Week one last year, 68.9. So 1.5 plays less. It's interesting. Wags, anything else? No. Um, Sheehan. I'm all good. I'll see you Thursday. Thank you. See you Thursday, Sheehan. Uh, Mike, James. So kind of along the lines of the, the clock rules, um, does it change how you approach um, kind of times when 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 maybe you would want to hurry up a little bit? So like you, you go down 14 nothing against Notre Dame. Normally, mm -hmm. if you know that the clock's going to stop after a first down, you know, you're not compelled to necessarily hurry things up. You still run your offense because sure. – you, you know, you, you're you not as pressed of that. Does that change how, how you approach kind of a hurry up situation a little bit? You no, know, I think, you know, the inside of two minutes of the half in the game is the same as it always has been. Right? I think where you kind of change your approach is entering that, that two minute window. Does that make sense, Mike? Yeah. And then you get to start to speed things up a little bit and you got to be more conscious of, of the clock, you know, when you're, when you're um, outside of the, just outside of that two minute marker. But I mean, it's, there's never any real, you know, in, in the past, there's never really a sense that you couldn't run the option anymore because you can still stop the clock when you get first downs and whatnot. Does that change anymore where, where, where you feel like you might have to throw the ball a little bit more, or do you still feel like that the whole offense would be available to you? No, I think if you find yourself down three scores or something like that, like it starts to change a little bit. And that, that's kind of always been the case of the option team, right? You're not, it's not an offense that's built to, score a lot of points in a hurry, you know what I mean? So you certainly have to be conscious of it, but it hasn't really changed a whole lot of things for us. Um, so you play, nor normally you play Notre Dame um, in November towards the end of the year, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like looms out there as this buzzsaw um, kind of kind of waiting for you on the schedule. Um, is there any advantage to kind of getting the game out of the way early on to maybe build a little momentum over the course of the season? No, I, I think it's, to be honest, I think it's probably a disadvantage to have that game in the opener. You know, I, I, I tried not to um, say that out loud before before we played. The truth is that they have more time to get ready for us. 
you know, um, and, and that was a, a disadvantage probably for us. Um, you know, uh, it's always exciting to play them, you know, and I was excited to play them in the first game. But the, the truth is to catch them midseason when they have, you know, just a, just a week to get ready for us is, is, you know, the things that we do on both sides of the ball, right, we do because they're hard to prepare for, you know, schematically. And, and so when you have more time to get ready, just like we play a team that has a bye, you know, the week before they play us, it's, it's an advantage for those teams. They have more time to spend working on some of the things that we do that are unique and different. And you know, I think not just for our offense, but, you know, for our defense as well, to have an extra week to prepare. You know, it sounded like Notre Dame had prepared for a long time for some of the things we do defensively, you know, that are really truly just as unique as what we do offensively and, and is difficult to prepare for, in my opinion. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Scott Wyckoff. Coach, this week I got a chance to talk to Jaden Umbarger, really impressive young man beyond his years. What does it mean to have a captain like him where sometimes we don't see some of the things that he does, but really mm -hmm. amazing how he speaks and, and the importance of the words he says? He's, he's a special young man. Uh, and you, you, you know that right away when you're around him just a little bit, the way he communicates and talks and um, just – I mean, he's an excellent captain. I mean, the things you don't see behind the scenes, the way he practices, <clears throat> the way he handles his business, you know, off the field. Um, his teammates have a ton of respect for him. And he's not a real vocal guy, Scott, but when he when he talks, people listen. Uh, and he is, I think he's beyond his years. and just really sharp, um, a great human being, um, a good football player, and, and just adds a lot to our program in a lot of different ways. Also quite a role model off the field for the younger players to see what a what a football player can also do in the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. And a great example to our younger players and you know, people outside of our program that, that get around him. Um, you can't you can't help but but know pretty quickly he's he's pretty special on that. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Joe Miller. I'm good, thank you. Pete Medhurst. Brian, you know, I'm a football geek. I watch a lot of stuff. I was watching some 70s stuff with the split backs because you all have gone to it. And because you're a team that is not going to spend a lot of time in four wide and uh, even five wide and stuff like that, what is it about that concept uh, that you and Grant like uh, as you look at it, your offensive staff? Uh, and last week, you know, when you were re really were able to stay within your uh, personality, um, that split back formation w was successful for you. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, the first thing it does, Pete, for us is allows us to get two of our best players on the field. And you know, with, with Texa and, and uh, Daba, we got two tee backs on the field at the same time. Uh, we we got to find ways to get those guys, you know, the ball more, not just in, inside the tackles, but outside on the perimeter allows us to do that. And it's a different look than, than the double slot, kind of plays with your eyes a little bit. And um, so it's a, just a new one to our offense that, that, that I think is really good and something we'll continue to build on. Are, just for uh, mechanic purposes, for our description, are they T's when it's split back and B's when they're solo, or are they all T's now at that yeah. position? We we call them all T's. Now, I don't know if, if Coach Chesna calls it something different when they're both in there, you know, for for uh, alignment purposes, but they're, they're T-backs. 